Hiya! Welcome to my little series here where I'm going to show you how to make the game that you see on screen right now. This series is broken into six different parts and this first part actually has two different versions. The version you're on right now is 100% completely beginner friendly. It'll give you the basics of Game Maker and how programming Game Maker works. You'll get familiarized with the fundamentals and we will get a player on screen that can walk around and run into walls. I do my best to explain everything that shows up in this video as thoroughly and clearly as I can. So if maybe you've poked around a game maker before, maybe you've watched one of the yo-yo games kind of built-in tutorials, or maybe you've watched a basic tutorial for some different type of game, like a platformer from someone else, then you can go on over to the other version of part one, which is a good bit shorter and doesn't walk through everything quite so slowly. So yeah, all you need to do is just download Game Maker Studio 2 and we're off! Alright, so uh, let's just make our new project here. We're going to use Game Maker language. And then we need to name our project Very Cool RPG. Exude Confidence. And we're in! Okay, so first things first, on the right here, we have the asset browser, which is where all of the assets for your game are going to be and organized. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do, we're just going to jump right in and we are going to make a sprite to represent the player. So we click on sprites, we right click, go to the create menu, which brings a drop down and create a sprite asset. Everyone has their own kind of naming conventions for stuff. Uh, the way I generally do it is by doing SPR underscore and then whatever I want to name it. So I would call this SPR underscore player. Uh, you'll probably see different people do different stuff. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you're consistent with yourself. Um, okay, so let's click down here on this first frame so we can open up the editor. Now, the default size for sprites are generally going to be like a 64 pixels wide and 64 pixels tall. You see down here. Let's go ahead and resize this to a 16 by 16. So we can go to the top here to image and then go to resize all frames resize canvas and then 16 times 16 and apply that so good we, we have a good little square now we have a good size square now so uh let's just fill this in with a color i'm gonna pick this beautiful red and this is our player for now and that's it that's all we got to do here so exit out we now have this sprite asset here uh pretty cool and we really don't need to do anything else here either so it's done now, sprites are just images, even if they're full animations, that's all they are. Uh, they don't actually run any code. Uh, that's all objects that actually run code and make your game a game. So, let's make an object for our player as well. So, let's right click on it the same way, go to create, and this time we're going to create an object. Now, uh, I named my objects obj underscore, and then whatever it is I need to name it. Again, just stay consistent with whatever it is, just as long as you know what's going on, that's what's important. So the first thing we're going to do with our object is go into this little drop down menu for the sprites, open up our sprite folder, and then assign our player sprite to our player object. Alright, cool, now we have an object. Uh, we have a player. It won't do anything, there's no code, but we'll get to that in a second. So now we can close out of this, we have a sprite, we have an object. And the final thing we're looking at for this little basics are the rooms. There should already be one here, so let's open that up. And this is it. So this big black box is your room where you can put your different objects and stuff. Uh, over here, you have your layers. Instances uh, are what you would also call objects. So this is a layer where you can place your objects. The background is currently this big square here, and let's just go ahead and put our player into that instance layer. So to do that, you highlight the layer that you want to place things on, then you go over to your resource tree, highlight the thing you want to put down, it has to be the correct type of asset, and then as you hover over the room you can hold the alt key, and then you can place an object wherever you want to. Um, Let's put it up here on the top left for a second because after we place this in, well now it's in the room, which is great, uh, but now that we've placed this, something we need to do is we're going to resize our room. It's very big right now, so on the bottom left, 
we're gonna do a couple different things. So the first thing here, you have the width of the room and the height of the room. Let's go ahead and set that to 288 wide and 216 high. So now our room is a much more reasonable size compared to our player. Um, let's continue on to viewports and cameras, which is very, very important. This is how wide and how tall the view in pixels of your game is going to be, and essentially how big the window is going to be whenever you run the game. That's the viewport. So let's enable our viewports. We'll go to viewport zero, make it visible, we'll turn it on. You'll see here it just appeared, this border. It's huge because it defaulted to the same size as the room whenever it started. So for our camera, we are going to do it with those same values that we made the width and the height of the room, which is 288 pixels wide and 216 pixels tall. This is a 4x3 ratio. You're probably going to either want to do a 4x3 ratio or a 16x9 ratio. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I would say just go ahead and do what I'm doing here just to make it a little bit easier. And I just thought this was kind of... If, if you're wondering where these numbers came from, I just thought they kind of looked cool. I like this resolution. But yeah, so our viewport, we are not going to want to make it exactly the same size as our camera because the viewport is how many pixels on our actual display the window will be taking up. So if we made that 288 by 216, uh, the size of our window would be this literal size right here, which would be very, very tiny. So for a viewport, what you're going to want to do is multiply the camera size by just some whole number. Uh, I like to do it with this by 3, so 864 by 648. Um, this is how it works for mine. I have a 1080p monitor, so if you have like a 4K monitor, it's probably still going to show up really small. So just know that you take these numbers and you multiply them by the same whole number to make it bigger. Otherwise, you're going to get weird scaling and the pixels won't be the same size as each other and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. So uh, right now we can actually run the game because we've fixed our camera, we've fixed the viewport, and we've put an object in the room here. So. Uh, Let's see what we've done. Not much. No, but seriously, this is pretty cool. So you, you, you've you run a game and uh, you, you know, you did it. You can't, it's not fun at all because you can't do anything with it. Um, let's rectify that right now. So close out of this. Uh, we'll go back to our workspace. We can go ahead and close out of our room. We don't need it right now. And let's go back to our player object. So now we are going to start adding code, finally. I'm going to minimize that just so we have a little bit more room. All right, okay, so we're back to the player object. Here we have the event window, and events are the actual places where code is run. So let's add an event. We're going to add our create event. And a create event is... So all of the code that we would add here will run at the moment this object is created in the game. A lot of times you will use the create event to initialize your own variables. And we're gonna do that right now. So we can get rid of this commented code. We are gonna make two variables that will represent the speed our player can go left and right and up and down. So I'll show you what I mean. So first, let's call this x speed equals zero. So this is how you would set a variable. You type in whatever you want that variable to be equals whatever value you want it to be and then end with a semicolon. A variable is just a string of letters. It could be anything that you want it to be as long as it's not some built-in function or constant or whatever in Game Maker. And it will turn blue, which means that yes, I initialized this. I created this variable called xSpeed. And anytime I reference xSpeed after this in my code, Game Maker will know that xSpeed means zero. And I can also change the value of it. I'll show you how this all plays in in a second. So this is just know that this is just how you would set up a variable. So let's set up the variable y speed as well. 
So we're going to be using these two variables to determine how fast the character will move left and right for the x value and up and down for the y value. And we're going to set one more variable here and we're just going to call that move speed and we will set that to 1. Okay, now that we've set those up, we can close our create event. We're done with it for now and we can add another event and this is the step event. So, like I said, the create event only happens at the beginning of the creation of this object. It runs once. It's generally for initializing things, starting things up. The step event runs every single frame of the game. So the step event is mostly what you're going to use to actually do things in your game. So let's get rid of this code. And we're going to do our first function. So I'm actually just going to type this out and then I'll explain how it all works. So we're going to say right key equals keyboard check vk right and semicolon. So as you can tell, we're actually initializing another variable again. Uh, you know what that is, so I'll explain this. Keyboard check is a function. Functions are this orangey yellow and basically they return values based on what you're feeding them. So what this function is doing is it's checking your keyboard for a specific button being pressed. This red value here is a constant in GameMaker, which means that it's a variable that has already been built into GameMaker. It already has a value. And this one specifically, VK right, represents the right arrow button on a keyboard, virtual key right. So this function as a whole is checking to see if the right arrow key is being pressed. If it is being pressed, keyboard check returns the value of one. And if it is not being pressed, it returns the value of zero, which basically means that the value of the variable right key that we created is dependent on whether or not the right arrow key is being pressed. If it is, right key equals one. If it isn't, right key equals zero. So let's do this for uh, the other directions really quick. Okay, so now we have variables that hold the value for if you're pressing right, left, up, or down on your keyboard. We're going to be using this to figure out the movement of the character, which direction they should be going, the speed they're going, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you may be wondering, I, d I said that you'll generally be initializing variables in the create event. Uh, you can do it anywhere. You can, as you can tell, you can do it anywhere as long as you're never referencing a variable you haven't set before you've set it, because then GameMaker doesn't understand. So it doesn't have to be in the create event. Generally, it's a good idea to do it, uh, but this is fine right here. So let's use some of the other variables that we set up uh, with these to actually move the character. So as I said before, X speed is the speed at which our character moves left and right. And here's how we're going to calculate that. So we're going to say X speed equals right key minus left key. All right. Let me move this down a little bit. So basically what this is saying is this is taking the values of the right key being pressed and the left key being pressed and it's using them in a way that should calculate the direction we're going on our X speed. So what that means is if I'm pressing the right button and not pressing the left button, right is going to be one the left button is going to be zero. So that will be one minus zero. Our X speed equals one. If we're pressing the left button and not pressing the right button, right key would be zero minus left key, which would be one. So that would equal out to negative one, which means if you are adding negative one to an X value, it would actually be going backwards. So it would be going left. Uh, this also ensures that if we're pressing both the right and the left key, then it'll equal out to zero and your character won't move. This isn't finished though. This would work how it is, but we set this movement speed variable. So basically what we need to do is we need to add parentheses around these two. So we're taking this value that I was just talking about, and then we're going to 
multiply it with a little star here, multiply it times our move speed. If you're an astute math student, you'll know that this actually doesn't change anything because this value is still only being multiplied by 1. But basically what this means is setting it up this way, if we wanted to change the speed our character moved at, if we wanted to say our character movement speed wanted to be 2, then now the same code is running but it just is calculating properly how fast we want to go left and right. So that's why this is set up the way it is. So take this back to 1 because 1 is a nice number and we're going to do the same thing with the y speed but don't just copy and paste this uh, like exactly like I'm about to do hold on um, basically what we're going to do with actually you know what? no I'm going to type it out uh, so we don't get confused here so let's go ahead and add our parentheses here now uh, the way Y values work in Game Maker is actually probably the opposite of what you would expect. So, if you are going up this this way to the top of the screen, the Y values actually go down. And if you are going this direction to the bottom of the screen, the Y values actually go up. All that being said, what we're going to need to do is because going to the bottom of the screen needs to be added, we're going to start with down key, the down key value, subtracted by the up key value. So if you're pressing the down button and not pressing the up button, you'll get 1 minus 0 equals 1. Your Y speed will be 1, so it will be going down towards the bottom of the screen. So let's do the same thing here. Uh, we will multiply that times our move speed. Okay, so these are all variables that we have set ourselves. It won't actually do anything. Uh, we're just changing our own variables. So now that we have determined what our X speed and Y speed currently are based on what buttons are being pressed, we can just add them to the built-in X and Y values of the objects. So you see X is green there because that is a built-in variable for the objects in the game. So we could have x plus equals x speed. Uh, so this is how you would add something to a value. Uh, this is completely identical to say doing something like x equals x plus x speed. Uh, these mean exactly the same thing. Every step of the game, this value will be added to x. Either of these mean the same thing. This is just the more proper way to do it. It's a little bit less redundant, and it's just how you change values like that. So let's do the same thing with y plus equals y speed. So now we are determining our button presses here. If a button is being pressed and which buttons are being pressed, then based on those, we are calculating the speeds at which it should be going left and right or up and down and then we are actually adding those new values to our object here which means that it will move around the room so uh, we can actually just run that right now we have our room over here the player is already in here so uh, we can actually go up and run our game now and have our player move around a little bit and Hey, look at that. All right. Okay, cool. So we're not done yet. We got one more thing to do. And we are going to add walls for our player to run to, to run into, you know, like a, like a big old goofball. All right, so let's get out of here. You know what? Actually, before we do the, uh, we make the walls, I want to show you. Let's change our, uh, let's change our move speed to 10. Let's actually use this, this bad boy. Let's see what that does. All right, that was fun. Anyways, let's get back to the uh, walls. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, exit out of our room. We can get rid of the player object right now. Uh, now we need to make a new sprite. Everything from here on is stuff that we've already done. So uh, just with a couple extra bells and whistles, 
but uh, let's make a new sprite. Done this, go to the right click, go to the create, make sprite, click on this first frame. We'll do the same thing here that we did with the player. We'll resize the frame to a 16 by 16. And we can make the walls this pretty blue. And that's pretty uh, pretty easy. Oh, I forgot to rename it. So we can exit out here. We can rename it right now. SPR underscore wall. Easy peasy. Uh, let's go over one thing I didn't with the player sprite. So up on the top here, you can see there's this little point. This shows where the origin of the sprite is. They always start in the top left for new sprites. You can do this drop down menu. It'll uh, let you change where it needs to go. You can change the values manually here. You can drag it around. For our wall, we are gonna keep it in the top left, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover this now since it's, you know, it, it'll come into play at some point. Um, and then this bottom left menu down here is called the collision mask. Collision masks are what objects use uh, to check for collisions. That's that's pretty self-explanatory. There are certain functions in Game Maker that will check if objects are colliding with each other, and their mask is norm is determined by the sprite that they have. So uh, this one right now is the whole image. There you can have it automatically generate it. You can make it be the full image, which would be the same thing here, or you can do it manually. And I'll just do this just to show you that, see, this is how it kind of works. You can move it around. Um, we want it to be the full image right now. So, you know, we can keep everything how it would be. Uh, this is just important for actually making sure that the player runs into the walls properly. And we could do the same thing. Check the player sprite really quick. It should be exactly the same it should be this whole thing if I go into manual I can see that it is this full square uh, but just keep this in mind because down the road this is something important to note alright now let's make another object for our wall so create go down to object name this obj wall and then open our sprite folder and take the wall sprite awesome thing about uh, the way we're doing walls here is this wall actually doesn't have to run any code at all. The interaction with the wall and the player is going to be totally done in the player object. So we're actually just, just done with this. So let's go back to the player into our step event because remember that runs every single frame of the game and whenever we're checking for things like collisions when the player can move and stuff we're gonna need to check it every single frame okay so we're learning a new function right now and we're gonna we're gonna put this new code right in between getting our X and Y speed and actually adding our X and Y speed and you'll see why that is in a second so um, here's another little trick too if you put two forward slashes you can create a comment in your code which it's not code at all it's literally just something that you can use to mark stuff for yourself so we'll comment this out and we will say this is the collisions again I'm just gonna type all this out and then I'll explain it step by step afterwards okay so we have a new function and our first if statement so an if statement basically just means uh, whenever you write if like this and you put the uh, some kind of conditional here it could be a function it could be a, a simple mathematic equation whatever it is an if statement says if this statement is true then you can execute all of this code in between the curly brackets you have to use curly brackets after a statement like this that's just how coding works you'll see this kind of thing a billion times it'll get burned into you very fast I promise so now let's let's look what this statement is actually asking for so this function here place meeting this is checking to see if there is a collision between the object calling this function and this object over here so you can see there's three separate things here if you look on the bottom you'll see that whenever you have a, a function highlighted or clicked on 
it'll give you the little pieces that it needs to actually check to see if it's true or false or whatever. These are called arguments. So there are three different arguments here. So here it's looking for an X position, a Y position, and an object to check for a collision. So the X and Y values that we are using are going to be the X and Y value of the object that's calling it, so the player, but we are checking the player's X value plus the X speed that we've gotten here. The X speed has not been added yet. We're checking before we get to that point. If there is a wall in the way, then we're gonna change our X speed back to zero, which means that it will not go forward anymore and it won't run into the wall and it won't get stuck in the wall. So pretty simple. There are a few different ways to do this. Actually, there's a billion different ways to do anything in programming, but this is just the way I like to do it. So yeah, pretty easy. Let's also do it for the Y value. So just make sure whenever you're doing the Y value check is that you're adding the, you're checking the Y plus the Y speed value and that you're setting the Y speed value back to zero. If you have some issues, uh, it, you might have accidentally put X speed on one of these or you might have added Y speed to X, whatever. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in programming. Uh, you just kind of have to, if something does go wrong, you just kind of have to go back over and pay attention. Okay, so uh, now that we have this, we've only got two more things to do. One is opening up our room here. We can go back to the instances layer because we're adding more instances now. We are adding a wall. So if you remember, you just have to hover around here and hold Alt and you can place walls. So let's just place a couple around here. Now something you can do uh, I've been pl I've placed individual walls, but what you can do is you can actually just place one and you can just drag it if you want. Uh, that collision mask that we were talking about will scale with this thing right here. So this is totally fine to do. You can place them individually. It's uh, probably better to have less objects all over the screen or whatever, but you know, it doesn't really matter. You're probably going to be... It doesn't matter. Okay, but we have the walls here, so let's uh, let's run the game and see if we run into everything all right. All right, here we go. Hey, hey, look at that! We're running into everything. Everything's going uh, everything's going pretty smoothly, pretty perfect. Look at that. Okay, so first video down. If you have any questions about anything, there's a comment section. You send me a message on Twitter, or I have a Discord, which is for my game. And if you just kind of happen to find this video, then yeah, check out my uh, game, Rose of Starcross. There's a free demo. There's a trailer for that on this channel. But uh, yeah, part two is going to be focused on actually getting some animations on our character, which is going to be super cool. Like I said in the beginning, this was just an alternate version of part one. This video has ended in the exact same place that the other one does. So you can go right into part two. The pacing for the rest of the videos will be a little bit faster, but now you should be well equipped to keep up with it. Plus when push comes to shove, it's just it's just programming. You just have to copy what I do. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this first one. Good luck and uh, keep on trucking.